Hey, what's going on guys? Another live tonight on uh, Instagram and on YouTube. We're going live here. So we're going to be talking about night fishing tonight and uh, we're kind of going to go over whether or not night fishing is worth it, when it's worth it, when you want to target fish at night, um, kind of what lures we use at night for different species different techniques for fishing at night. So we're going to cover all that stuff, take a bunch of questions and answers, have some, some discussion on the topic. Um, also we'll go over some legality issues of fishing at night, safety issues of fishing at night. So that's kind of the topic here tonight. So how's everybody doing? Where are you all from? Let me know in the comments where you're from, where you're tuning in from, and let me know whether or not you uh, ice fish at night. And if, if you ever have, uh, what species you fish at night for. That'd be awesome. And uh, Josh already commented before the stream started and said, this lure worked on me. I don't know if he's talking about my thumbnail or what. <laughs> okay, Michigan. Nice. Canada. Cool. Um, Sauger. Okay. Yep. Sauger is a good species to fish at night for sure. I'm coming to you from northern Wisconsin. So, uh, we do have some ice now and we've been fishing for a while, but it's been kind of sketchy. So red wing, that's Minnesota. Nice. Walleyes at night is one of my favorite things to do in Minnesota, Wisconsin. Nice. Uh, Wisconsin walleye and crappie. Perfect. Yep. Those are all good nighttime species. Walleyes of course, and crappies are both known for being good nighttime targets. And, uh, that's probably what the primarily uh, people are fishing when they're fishing at night through the ice, but we're going to talk about some other species too that you can target through the ice at night as well. So um, Josh says, I've tried the crappie thing at night, but not too much luck yet. I do know where you're from. <laughs> yep. Uh, Rib Lake, Wisconsin, walleyes at night. Nice. Five inches of ice down there. That's good. So um Basically, when we're talking night fishing, I'm talking anything after dark. So not necessarily sunset bite, but like when it's pitch dark, like half an hour after sunlight all the way to dawn in the morning. That would be what I can I would consider nighttime fishing. Um, on Mille Lacs, nice, good. Um, Soda Pop says I fish for pike at night. If I ever get ice, nice. Yeah, I've caught pike at night, although I've never targeted them, targeted them at night. Um, <clears throat> so we'll talk about the first two main species, first of all, I guess, which would be walleyes and crappies. That's kind of what we're going to focus on first. Now, as far as when to fish at night, um, you know, I any time in the winter you can fish at night. Every anywhere from early ice to late ice, I've definitely tried it and it works. Um, and as far as for you know walleyes, obviously there's a season here in Wisconsin, so we can't fish late ice for them at night, but we can fish the crappies all year round at night. So uh, walleye slayer says northern Wisconsin. I caught a 15 and 12 pound pike today on the Predator. Nice, awesome, dude. That's cool. And I've caught some big pike while fi walleye fishing at night. Yes, the pike do bite at night for sure. Um, so let's let's talk, What when does it make sense? Because I know a lot of you have tried crappies at night and it hasn't worked. Um, you know, uh, most people can catch walleyes at night, but crappies can be a little trickier. In my opinion, the best, night, the best lakes to fish at night are going to be clear, right? That's kind of one of the key ingredients to night fishing is you have to have decently high visibility in the water or otherwise the fish aren't gonna be able to see your bait at night it's it's dark during the daytime in some of those real murky lakes so uh hey hannah again we were just chatting earlier and uh she's she's getting on the ice down in southern wisconsin now which is good to hear um so clear water is huge <clears throat> and then depth is also a factor when it comes to crappies. Um, I've had luck fishing for crappies at night all the way down to 35 feet. 
excuse me, <clears throat> but that's in Clear Lakes. Um, so like if you're talking murky lakes, you're not going to be able to probably catch them in the basin that deep. It's just too dark unless you're using glow and then you might be able to, but I've had my best luck on crappies at night in like stained lakes that aren't ultra clear, but aren't super cloudy. So like 10 visit, 10 foot visibility lakes are great. Um, and now I've also done well on basin crappies and weed crappies at night. So I've caught both kind of shallow and deep crappies at night, but the, the key to me, at least in Wisconsin, where we can do this legally is, is using a light of some sort. And the light tends to draw the crappies to where you're fishing. <clears throat> and I've experimented with, with this a lot. Some lakes it works really, really well. Other lakes it doesn't seem to matter that much. But there's certain lakes that I fish where I can literally shine like a Milwaukee lantern straight down the hole. And there's no fish around and all of a sudden they, they just come in. You can watch them come in on live scope and they just hover under that light. And what happens is I've noticed in the hole where that light is, zooplankton just comes up to that light and fills the hole with zooplankton, <clears throat> which is what these fish are eating. So the zooplankton is being attracted to that light. And then the crappies in turn are being attracted to the zooplankton. So <coughs> it's a great technique. Now in Minnesota, I know you can't, technically attract those fish with a light on purpose but you can have your lights on in your shack right that's not illegal and the fish the crappies will move towards that light it's enough light just having your shack lit up that it's going to attract them to some degree so that's basically my strategy for finding crappies at night is just find them during the day first know they're there, use live scope, chase them around a the basin, find them in the weeds, then go back after dark, put a light in the shack or down the hole, and then start fishing them. <clears throat> um, it works great. And a, nighttime fishing is not a hole hopping situation for me, at least for crappies. It's a sit and wait kind of a thing. And I typically target them with, depending on their aggressive mood, I'll target them with small spoons, a dead stick with a minnow, and if they're finicky, I'll go to like a glow tungsten and plastic. That works pretty good. We'll talk about glow too, but um, glow definitely makes a difference. Now, fishing walleyes at night is a whole different ball game. Um, I've done really well on walleyes at night on set lines. So tip ups, the predator tip ups, perfect. Put a light on it or some kind of uh, you know indicator. When you get a bite <clears throat> and that's a great way to target walleyes at night and my some of my biggest walleyes i've ever caught in fact probably the two biggest walleyes i've ever caught have been on tip-ups after dark um maybe even my top three you know we're talking like i'll push in 30 inch you know 28 to 30 inch walleyes and you might only get a couple bites a night but those big fish definitely come out at night so when i'm fishing walleyes at night I'm typically going to fish a lot shallower than I will during the daytime for walleyes because <clears throat> those big walleyes love to eat bluegills. It's one of their favorite foods. And those bluegills often are hanging around in like those, you know, 10 foot weed lines in a lot of our lakes up here. So you'll find those walleyes moving up shallow at night. And I've caught big walleyes at night as shallow as like five or six feet in those lakes <clears throat> where they go up in the weeds and they just slink around and through those weed beds ambushing bluegills and you find a pocket with your underwater camera before dark in those weeds and drop a big sucker down there something that moves a lot <clears throat> you know for these bigger walleyes at night i typically use a big bait and uh it can, seems to create more commotion and a big walleye is not afraid to eat you know a six seven eight inch sucker at all <coughs> excuse me just getting over a little bit of a cough here but so like we've caught walleyes with you know pike tails hanging out of their throat like a 10 or 12 inch pike that they've eaten so they're not afraid of a big bait and it seemed like those weed walleyes especially are more apt to eat a bigger minnow than deep water walleyes for whatever reason um 
So that's a great way, way to target walleyes at night. And then also uh, definitely jigging works as well, but it's the opposite of crappies. You do not want a lot of white light in your shack when you're jigging walleyes. Uh, they tend to spook from light. They're not used to it. They can see way better than crappies in the dark, dark. So I, if I'm fishing walleyes like in my shack and jigging for them at night, I like to keep the lights dim just enough so I can see to tie jigs and whatnot. But I definitely don't try and light it up like I do for the crappies. Um, I've also caught pike and bluegills when I really light it up in shallow water because the bluegills will move in and they'll start biting in the middle of the night. I've had it happen many times as long as they can see. So um, in deeper water, hang a big bait that will attract them high in the water column. Big walleye will come up for that. Yeah, I know some guys that have done really well doing that too. Uh, big baits just seem to be the key, I think, because they move more water and they tend to create more of a commotion and good fresh bait is definitely what you want you don't want just a half dead minnow hanging there off a treble hook because they're just not going to see it they're not going to feel the vibrations on their lateral line and they aren't going to come in and attack it so fresh bait big bait at night upsize your bait um and that's that's my preferred way of targeting walleyes at night and glow you know, on my set lines, I haven't really experimented a whole lot with glow. I've done a little bit with glow beads and whatnot, but it's just a real pain in the butt to go recharge all of those lines over and over. And so I, I tend to stick with glow on my jigs. So either my spoons or my, you know, uh, glide baits, uh, vibrating baits, whatever I'm using at night, I'll glow them up and... I don't know. I honestly can't tell you how much of a difference it makes, but it definitely does make the bait easier for the fish to see. And I've caught plenty of fish on glow baits to know it doesn't hurt. <laughs> Let me put it that way. Um, while I am pike, but never tried at night. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so, so nice to have an option to go fishing. Like it gets dark at five o'clock here right now. Like it's dark, dark at five fifteen. So if you're not fishing after dark, you're missing a lot of your waking hours of opportunity to fish if you just quit when it, when the sun goes down. So it's nice, like the other night, I just walked out on the lake at 6 o'clock. It was pitch black, dropped a light where I knew some crappies were and caught a bunch and went home and, you know, cleaned them and was done by 9.30. And that was all night fishing. So I wouldn't, if I didn't night fish, I wouldn't have been fishing that day. So to me, it just gives you another another opportunity to go when you might not otherwise go um a dirty bomb yeah so there's a fish daddy you can see the hat here i'm wearing fish daddy outdoors has a lot of lighted lures including the dirty bomb that blinks led um they've got the micro led spoon which you can put in a, a led or a glow stick or a rattle into the chamber those i've been experimenting with a little bit and uh, they definitely attract fish, especially at night and especially in murky water during the daytime. So <clears throat> that's another way to light up your jigs other than glow that works really well. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of crappies and walleyes as far as my experience goes. Uh, bigger, louder, um, brighter, you know, just baits that are going to bring those fish in better at night and then of course for crappies using the light is huge um that definitely definitely does the job uh so now some other species <clears throat> that we can target let me know if you guys target any other species other than crappies and, and walleyes at night but one of the big ones is burbot you know that's a big nighttime bite and it's primarily on lake superior up here where we're at but that's one of my favorite ways to fish is go out on Lake Superior, on Chiguamigan Bay, or wherever we're ha we happen to be fishing, <clears throat> and just drop a big glow jig down there, super heavy, super loud rattle. Glow it up really good with a big chunk of meat, typically smelt, and pound the bottom with it. And then we also set set lines for the burbot and do really well on those two. And we typically use 
the predator tip ups with a dead smelt just laying it right on the bottom. And I'm using the Vulture Systems indicators on those. So I've got the lanyard with the, you know, the beeper on it. So I can just leave those out for hours if I have to. And I can go to sleep even if I'm not, if I'm night camping. And all of a sudden I get that beep, beep. And it's like, oh, time to get up and catch a fish. It's it's a adrenaline rush. So, and we've had some great nights on Lake Superior um, catching burbs. You know, we've caught some nights twenty or thirty of them in a night, up to you know eight, six, seven, eight pounders. So that's a another classic fish that, if you have access to them, is a great nighttime bite. <clears throat> I know some Minnesota lakes, some Canadian lakes also have burbot. So that's another option. And glow and, and rattles are kind of the key for burbot and lots of meat. That's really all you need to know for burbs. They're pretty, pretty easy to catch if you if you're around them. <clears throat> um, another one that's kind of locally a favorite for night fishing would be sturgeon and i'm hoping to go do a sturgeon trip this year um night fishing if we get enough ice on the st croix because the st croix river is kind of the place around here where people do a lot st croix and the st louis river they both get enough ice that you can fish them typically and uh it's kind of a slow waiting game for uh, sturgeon but <clears throat> you know if you catch one or two you know 40 to 60 inch fish in a night that's a pretty awesome tussle. You know, you're talking heavy rods, heavy line, big fish, and uh, <clears throat> they're really fun to catch through the ice for sure. So that's another species that's pretty easy to catch at night. <clears throat> Burbot's my goal. Nice. Bullhead bite good at night. You know, that's funny. I caught, <clears throat> I actually caught a brown bullhead earlier this season in the dark um and i i don't know if i've ever caught a bullhead through the ice before that so i would guess if you had a lake that was full of bullheads and you wanted to catch them you know you know through the ice after dark would definitely be the time to go because they are definitely more active in the dark you can see that in the summertime you won't see a bullhead and then all of a sudden it gets dark and you throw a worm out on the bottom and it gets eaten instantly. There's hundreds of them. They come out of nowhere. So I'm sure they do the same thing at night. And, uh, you know, kind of like catfish, they're a little less active in the wintertime. But if you have a lot of them in a the lake, I'm sure you could catch them at night if you targeted them. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I never really, never done it, never tried it, but I'm sure you could. <coughs> what else? Um, you know, like I said, pike can be targeted through the ice at night, but I would say most people don't, don't do it, uh, on a super clear night with a full moon. I think you could definitely do all right on pike and I've caught plenty of them accidentally, but I've never really targeted them. Bluegills. If you put a light down there, you can catch bluegills at night pretty easily, actually. And I've done that many times. Um, am I forgetting? I forget the species. I've never really caught bass at night. I think they're pretty sight and visual feeders, but they don't have great eyesight after dark. Another one's trout and salmon. So I have not done a lot of experimenting with trout and salmon after dark, but I know, you know, like king salmon, for instance, they feed really well in the dark, like down in Lake Michigan. So I wouldn't be surprised if you could catch them at night. Um, Although I haven't tried. Oh, I did catch one. I caught one nice rainbow one time in a lake that gets some stocked rainbows in it. Uh, caught it on a tip-up walleye fishing in like four feet of water. And it ate like a four-inch shiner. It was a nice like 20-inch rainbow. So I know that one ate at night. So there's there's one example of a trout that will eat at night. So I'm sure there's more. But uh, if you have only trout where you live, like if you're out, in the, out west in the mountains, it would be worth a try just to see you know, if those fish would react in the dark or not, um, be curious to know if any of you have ever fished trout at night through the ice. <clears throat> Heard browns bite good at night. Well, that's true. I mean, a lot of guys fish brown trout 
Uh, they mouse them, you know, in streams with flies. And, uh, you know, brown trout are notorious night biters in rivers. So, yeah, I would be surprised if they wouldn't bite it at night in a lake or something, too. I mean, that makes, makes total sense. So, yeah, um, I think it's worth trying anything. Like I said, it just fishing at night extends your chances of catching fish. It gives you another opportunity to fish when you might not otherwise go. Um, now, safety is definitely a concern at night. Um, one thing you got to be careful of is to make sure on this thinner ice that you go with somebody because if you do fall through, no one's going to see you at night. So it's really critical that you team up. Um, now, also a huge concern is getting hit by snowmobilers or four wheelers. So when you want, what you want to do at night, if you're setting up a shack, you want to make sure that you're visible. So make sure your shack has piping on it that's reflective. Um, I sometimes even put a light, like a flashlight or something, up on top of my shack or leave the windows open so that people can see, you know, through the windows that somebody's there and something, you know, is in the way. Uh, I know several instances of shacks, you know, like hub houses and stuff getting hit by snowmobilers that weren't paying attention. And it seems crazy that that could happen, but in a snowstorm or whatever, when low visibility is low, it definitely does. And so you definitely want to make sure, sure you're visible <clears throat> to people using the ice for recreation and travel too. Um, sorry, I don't know if you said it, but what do you think is the best nighttime spoon or lure for walleye? Do you use any minnow head on the treble? Thanks. Um, I did not really talk super in-depth baits for walleyes yet. So for me, I would say I've had the most luck on two lures at night. Uh, one would be a rattling spoon. So um, any kind of rattle spoon that glows with a minnow head on it. That's a classic nighttime lure. I've caught a ton of walleyes on that after dark. Um, you know, Clam makes several good ones. The rattling PT spoon is a, is the newest one. It has an awesome rattle in it. Glows really well. <clears throat> That's a good, good option. Um, and the other one would be a glide bait. So any kind of glide bait will work. I'm a huge fan of the Euro Tackle uh, Z Darter version 2. We'll put some glow on that. And uh, it's a great bait to fish at night. I have not had a ton of luck on rattling baits like Z Vivers and stuff at night. I don't know if that's just, I don't know if that's just uh, sort of a coincidence or not, but it seems like a rattle bait would be a good choice because it makes so much noise. <clears throat> but I just haven't caught a ton of fish on rattle baits at night. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but it just seems like. I have better luck with glide baits at night and that's my experience. So, um, is it possible to be successful at ice fishing without a fish finder? If so, where would you generally recommend going on a lake? That's a great question. So this ties into night fishing actually. So when I first started fishing as a kid, <clears throat> almost nobody had fish finders or vexlars or anything, but I had some friends that figured out, that if they put lanterns out over the basin and dropped crappie minnows down, they could catch crappies. And so they would measure down <clears throat> to the bottom and they actually didn't have reels on these rods. They just would set the depth to five feet off the bottom where they were fishing. They'd tie them off to the rod and then they would basically just let those sit with a bobber on them. When, I, when, when a bobber went down, they would set the hook and then they would hand line the crappies up and dude, we, we caught, I mean, I don't know, uncountable numbers of crappies that way when I was a kid. So we didn't need fish finders at all. We just figured out, Hey, this is where they're at. And we can, uh, we can just basically catch them at night using lanterns again to bring those fish in <coughs> and, uh, catch them. So, Jaron Clinch said he finally found a girlfriend. <laughs> nice. <laughs> good for you, buddy. That's good. 
You know, you get on enough YouTube videos, eventually some girl's going to fall in love with you. Um, Lucky Strike, Mountain Fort Peck, at night with large sucker minnows on tip-ups, walleyes, pike, catfish, and lake trout. Nice. Um, that's another one, catfish. If you have catfish in the waters near you, I'm sure nighttime is the best time to get them through the ice for sure. <clears throat> That makes sense. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. Just saying. You get on YouTube and all of a sudden the, the women come out of the woodwork. Uh, thoughts on live scope during ice. So, um, you know, I've used live scope a lot at night and, and on the ice, but at night too. What I mean, I've used it all kinds of different ways, but <clears throat> my favorite way to use live scope is obviously the, the standard way of just scanning an area, finding a school of fish, getting on top of them, chasing them around the basin. It works, but I like to use live scope when it gets really cold and I'm just holed up in my shack over a basin. I'll use it in down mode and I can see schools coming at me then. So it gives me the advantage of being like, okay, here they come. They're coming. I can see them checking out my set line. They're not hitting that. Then I can see them move over to my jigging bait. And I can kind of <clears throat> see the whole school and how it's reacting as a school. But then I'm still using my Vexilar to actually get the bites underneath my hole. So I'll use them both in tandem. And you you can really pinpoint what thing, what's going on <laughs> because... You know, you see a fish come in on live scope and down mode, and you think it's by your bait, but when you're using a Vexilar, you realize it's not actually as close as you thought because it doesn't even show on the Vexilar, even though it looks like it's right next to it on the live scope. So the Vexilar really helps you dial in the bite when you're using uh, using down mode. And I, I like down mode because I can set a set line on either side of me, and I can see those minnows and i can see what's going on with them so a lot of times i'll <clears throat> i'll set like a big sucker off to one side or the other and i'll have it in down mode so i can see that and my bait that way i can catch crappies but also have a big set line out to catch a walleye or a pike on and i can see when that big fish comes in and starts looking at the minnow i can see if they eat it <clears throat> if they decide to swim away from it then I might downsize or upsize my minnow or my tackle, change the depth, something like that. That works really good, too. So I use it for all kinds of different things on the ice. It's a very useful tool, and you can learn a lot in a short amount of time by using live scope for sure. <clears throat> Any other questions or thoughts for me on night fishing? Before I shut her down here, I'm uh, not going to go quite as long as I normally do tonight just because <clears throat> I'm fighting this cough and I've been talking all night so far. <laughs> so I guess to sum it up, for night fishing, we're going to upsize our baits, including our live baits. We're going to um, use lights to attract crappies. We're going to use glow lures and lighted lures to attract fish and anything with rattles anything that makes noise we're just trying to make a bigger ruckus down there and more of an impact on the the fish so that they can actually find us and that's the biggest thing you know once fish find you a lot of times you'll get bites so <clears throat> do i think weather of the night matters overcast versus full moon um I think it does for some species, you know, for walleyes. I've had some of my best nights walleye fishing on just like pitch black, no no moon, no stars, no nothing, dark as dark can be. Uh, no problem catching walleyes in the middle of the night in those conditions. I think like your pike and stuff, you know, you get a full moon, I think it definitely helps them see better. You'll have more luck on some of those other species with a little bit of light coming through. But, you know, I don't think it matters all that much. And I've fished at night in 20 below zero and done well too. So 
you know, it doesn't seem to matter too much. Good deal. Took a ton of notes. Awesome. Appreciate it. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, if you have any more questions, feel free to DM me on uh, on Instagram or whatever. I'm always happy to talk fish in there. So, Hooked Up Wisconsin <clears throat> on Instagram. And uh, you guys have a good night. We'll catch you later.